Hello, it's Phil and Heather, and we are here at the Summit Knobs Equestrian Trailhead. And today is our first day out shooting with our Canon R7s. We went live last night and did an unboxing. And uh, after that, it was almost dark. And we went out on the back porch and photographed some birds. And, and what I'm seeing so far is the camera does have a lot of noise. Uh, and that's to be expected, you know, with, with this amazingly high pixel density, it's, uh, if, if this pixel density was on a full frame camera, it'd be 83 megapixels. So uh, a lot of noise is to be expected, but the reach is really great. So it's kind of a compromise, but it, uh, if you're looking for reach, it's fantastic. So we, we did uh, a couple of shots last night, which I'll share with you now. This is going to be the only unedited photo that I will present in today's video. And this is a 6400 ISO shot and you can see a ton of noise. And here is that same image except for heavily cropped and mildly edited. And then this has been run through Topaz Denoise AI. And this morning we've kind of gotten off to a slow start. Uh, it's late June now and there's just not as many birds as there was earlier in the spring. Uh, we did see a couple of things. We saw a, a red-bellied woodpecker. We saw a common yellowthroat, but it was so deep in the thicket. I, I don't think I got a picture. I'm not sure about Heather. And then we found a white-eyed vireo, which you may be able to hear singing in this video clip. And I'm sure we both got a shot of that. So let's take a look at what we've done so far this morning. Here is a kind of backlit photograph of a red-bellied woodpecker, and this is not a bird. This is a mimosa flower, kind of blooming with some bokefied blooms in the background. And here it is. It's the white-eyed vireo, and this is my photos. And we have a new way to distinguish my photos from Heather's. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, they'll have my name or Heather's name. And we love this white-eyed vireo, just a beautiful little bird. And we were able to get really good shots of this guy. So that was really cool. And uh, mine, really only editing I did was I cropped them and I increased the contrast a pretty good bit and ran them through topaz. And that was it. And, you know, I liked them so much, I ended up editing probably more of these than any other bird. Oh, look, here are Heather's photographs. And as you can see, Heather's colors are often uh, more striking than mine. And that is when she's using an Nikon camera and when she's using something else. So those Nikon colors are really those Heather colors. Look at that awesome shot of the white-eyed vireo as it's singing. And here is another one of Heather's photos of the white-eyed vireo singing. Well, we have had a lot of luck since, uh, our, since we last checked in with you. First, we got a yellow-breasted chat, and it was kind of backlit. And then we got a, um, what did we get? A red-bellied woodpecker, and we got uh, indigo bunting, and we got a prairie warbler, and we got an eastern towhee. And the eastern towhee was, was standing in the top of a young pine tree and it was having trouble with its balance so we had all sorts of wing stuff we definitely have more light now although it's still definitely directional light it's it's still good and early so we're going to keep at it uh, and this camera definitely uh, with its high ISO difficulties it definitely likes some light so we are enjoying the way things are going right now I've got you standing with the sun in your eyes right I'm sorry eyes, yeah. sorry all right let's look at those pictures here is the yellow-breasted chat that we photographed. It was heavily backlit and was a lot more challenging to edit and get looking good than the white-eyed vireo was. That one was really easy and wow, there's a boring bird. There's a morning dove that I photographed and a lot less boring is this awesome looking male red-bellied woodpecker that was up in a tree. And look at this, here is the towhee that had blackberries in its mouth and it was trying to balance on the top of this pine tree and just all kind of struggling uh, with its balance, sticking its wings out in all sorts of directions. And look, now it has dropped its blackberries and it looks perfectly normal. And wait a minute, it's still struggling with its balance. And now let's take a look at Heather's photos from the same part of the day. Here is her beautiful photograph of the yellow-breasted chat all puffed up 
And here is another one of Heather's photographs of the yellow-breasted chat as it's surrounded by lots of foliage. One more yellow-breasted chat, and you can see it's on a blackberry vine there. This is Heather's photograph of that same red-bellied woodpecker. And I did not get a photograph of the prairie warbler that Heather photographed at this location. And here is Heather's photographs of the eastern towhee as it was trying to maintain balance there on the top of the pine tree with a mouthful of blackberries. I thought it turned out really cool, both her shots and my shots of this silly bird as it was trying not to fall off the top of the tree. And then right as we were about to leave, Heather spotted this red-tailed hawk high in a tree across the way. Here's the reason I didn't get any prairie warbler photos. I was making video clips while Heather was shooting, and I also got a little bit of video of our clumsy towhee friend. I put the 800 millimeter F11 on just to try it out, and one thing I was curious about, on, on a full frame camera, the 800 F11 and the 600 F11 have a smaller box. Instead of being able to focus on the full screen, you smoke us you focus in a smaller box and that's the same on the r7 but that box is a little bit bigger it covers more of the frame on this aps-c camera than on a full frame this is either a female or an immature indigo bunting and we saw a lot of indigo buntings but usually when we see them they look like this this is a mature male indigo bunting and I had a really nice time using the 800 F11 to make these photographs, but I found that my keeper rate with the 800 F11 was a pretty good bit lower than with the 100 to 500. And a lot of that might be that I'm trying to make photographs of tiny birds way further away using the 800 F11 than I would with the 100 to 500. So that can reduce the keeper rate as well. There's a beautiful prairie warbler, and this is a field sparrow that I photographed on the surface of the planet Mars. Here's a video clip I made of the prairie warbler as it's singing, and now here comes Heather's photographs, beautiful indigo bunting that she photographed there in the blackberry bush. Some of the blackberries are ready to pick and others are not quite ready yet. Just a beautiful bird. We love to see indigo buntings just as much as we love to see prairie warblers and i like these shots because you can see the kind of chestnut colored patch on the back of this prairie warbler very beautiful bird well i still have the 800 on and i'm finding i'm liking the 800 more than the 100 to 500 for these tiny tiny birds that heather and i like to shoot and you know even when i had the 800 on the r6 i often used the uh, the teleconverter, which gave me 1,120 millimeters because it's times 1.4. Well, now the 800 on the 1.6 crop, just got bit by an ant, is um, 1280, 1,280. So there's one thing. And the other thing, I always used uh, kind of 1 250th as my shutter speed um, with the 800 as kind of a minim minimum. Well, I tried the electronic shutter just for giggles. It's not what I plan to use. Uh, and also there's sound on the electronic shutter. So listen to this. How crazy is that? And I found that I can shoot, uh, if I've got a subject that's not moving around so there won't be motion blur on the subject, I found with electronic, I'm, I'm having some success at one 160th of a second. Uh, and, and Heather suggested that it's because there's not a shutter banging around inside the camera and it gives you less um, motion blur on this end. So I made a photograph of an Eastern Phoebe at uh, one one sixtieth. Let's look at that. This is an American bullfrog that I photographed with the 800 F11 and I really like the way you can see right through the water and see the parts of the frog that are underwater. And this is one of those 1 160th of a second shots. And this is that Phoebe photo that I made at 1 160th of a second that I told you about. And now Heather is still using the 100 to 500 and she's at 1 800th and her ISO is comparable to mine at that slow shutter speed. Here is a dragonfly she made. Heather and I hung around down at Volkswagen Wetlands for a while and we kind of separated and did some photography on foot. I got mostly Eastern Phoebes and I think a red winged blackbird. I'm really not sure what all Heather got, uh, but now we are getting close to being done. But I thought, uh, seeing as how I really am enjoying the 800 millimeter lens, I thought I would let Heather use my 1.4 teleconverter on her 100 to 500. So that'll give her 
700 millimeters at f10 so we're going to shoot a little bit more but in the meantime let's take a look at the shots we got down at volkswagen wetlands here's my photograph of the red winged blackbird there and this is in a tree just over the water at volkswagen wetlands and this is another really beautiful dragonfly photograph that heather made and she also made this fantastic carolina chickadee photo i think this one is really great and this is a blue gray gnat catcher poor thing looks really rough but we think this is an immature or maybe a female and this is an american goldfinch just really beautiful bird we worked a little bit more and heather got to use the teleconverter so she had 700 millimeters and i worked some more with the 800. i think we got a few shots of maybe a bunting and uh what was the other thing a prairie warbler it was cloudy for a moment and i was able to make this high key shot of the indigo bunting and now let's take a look at some more prairie warbler photography that we did this one was kind of in a grassy area so it had some interesting backgrounds and perches as we photographed the prairie warbler and you could see in that previous photo you could see the chestnut brown patch and in this next photo you can see that the prairie warbler is singing and now let's take a look at some of heather's photos this is with the 100 to 500 and the 1.4 teleconverter she managed to make the sky look blue in her pictures of the indigo bunting on this perch. Really sharp though. The 100 to 500 with the teleconverter produces really sharp images. And you can see that also in these prairie warbler photographs there in the Blackberry area of the equestrian trail. And now we are here at Harrison Bay State Park and we're about to eat lunch. But there's a, uh, a nest of swallows right up here and as you can see, Heather is working on it. We both, uh, we went back to the 100 to 500 for this because we're really close. She took the teleconverter off, I took the 800 off and we made some shots here with the 100 to 500. So let's see the baby swallows. I actually made this photograph of the baby barn swallows with the 800 millimeter lens. And then these next few photos are shots that Heather made with the 100 to 500. And there's all the baby swallows waiting for mom to come and feed them. And now mom is there and filling their mouths with food. And sometimes she's not ready to feed them, but they are ready to be fed. That is for certain. It was really cool seeing these barn swallows there right on the side of the building in the restaurant where we ate. And while I had the 100 to 500 on, I found this beautiful male Eastern bluebird and photographed it there. We are back home now. We've been actually working on our pictures for quite a while. And um, I really enjoyed using the 800 millimeter, but I don't think it's as sharp uh, as the 100 to 500. Matter of fact, I know it's not as sharp as the 100 to 500. It's nice to have the extra 300 millimeters of reach, but the 100 to 500 is definitely sharper and you know I, I think next time i'm going to use the 100 to 500 in the teleconverter and uh i don't know what heather's going to use what are you going to do i don't know we'll figure it out and um you know the i know i've whined a lot in this video about the r7 having a lot of noise and that's you know that's just to be expected it's an aps-c camera smaller sensor super high resolution and i'm comparing it to using a R6, a full frame camera, super low resolution. You know, I'm comparing those two things and the R6 has almost no noise. It's just ridiculous how little noise. Really the amount of noise on the R7 is kind of more like what you would expect. Um, I think you should probably try to stay 4,000 or below. What yeah. Do you, what, yeah, that's what I'd recommend. Yeah, 6,400 is pretty darn noisy. And uh, I highly recommend Topaz Denoise AI to anyone who owns any camera. I use it on all the shots coming out of the super low noise R6, but I definitely use them on the R7. Uh, do you have any, any closing thoughts about using the camera? How's it compared to your Z50? I mean, I don't know. Um, I would say the noise level is probably comparable to what I was seeing with my Z50, um, but it just, I really like having the extra megapixels because I can crop in a little more. Um, of course, you, you're getting way better autofocus than you're used to, too. Yeah, yeah, the autofocus is just night and day difference. Yeah, and, and, and that doesn't mean that every single photograph we make is perfectly in focus. No. Anybody who says, get perfect focus every time, 
is They're probably right. BSing you. Uh, have perfect exposure every time you're BSing. You know, every once in a while, you or the camera or both are going to make a boo-boo. That or, you know, even if you've got it in perfect focus, if you've got motion blur, it's, yeah. Yeah, you know, because you're always fighting with the amount of light, so mm -hmm. you're trying to keep your shutter speed as low as you can stand it, so you can keep the ISO low, so you're gonna get motion blur sometimes. You know, there's, uh, bird photography is hard. Yeah. But uh, I recommend uh, whatever camera you're using, just keep on practicing and, and you'll get better and better. Uh, I've been practicing for years and years and still have room for improvement. But uh, anyway, I guess we've rattled on long enough. Thanks for watching our first kind of out in the real world making photos with our new Canon R7s. And we appreciate you watching. And uh, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.